Greetings organic chemistry students. This is chapter 1-2 and it is a audio lecture on hybridization and molecular geometry of organic compounds. So we're going to talk about three types of hybridization and geometries as related to organic compounds, specifically carbon. The first being sp3 hybridization. So remember, hybridization is a mixing of atomic orbitals in order to give you bonding orbitals. And for carbon atoms, sp3 hybridization, what we have are four sigma covalent bonds. Now, sigma covalent bonds are where the bonding electrons are directly in between any two atoms. So in ethane, for each carbon, we see we have one, two, three, four sigma covalent bonds. The electrons in the sigma covalent bond are somewhere directly in between these two carbon atoms. Let me also say that in terms of sigma covalent bonds between any two atoms, there is always one and only one sigma covalent bond. Any additional bonds you see will be pi covalent bonds. Now, for organic chemistry, for excuse me, for carbon atoms, always associated with sp3 hybridization is going to be a tetrahedral molecular geometry. So the structure on the right is still ethane. Okay. What we have is a dashed bond represents this hydrogen coming forward. Excuse me. The dashed bond represents a hydrogen going backwards behind the screen. The wedge-shaped bond represents this hydrogen coming forward or out of the screen. The bonds that just show up as lines are in the plane of the screen. So this helps us in, on a two-dimensional piece of paper or on a two-dimensional screen to help see this carbon in three dimensions. In other words, a tetrahedral carbon. And the same with the carbon on the right. Okay, so sp3 hybridization for carbon is associated with four sigma covalent bonds and tetrahedral molecular geometry. Next, sp2 hybridization at carbon. And sp2 hybridization is represented by three sigma covalent bonds. So looking at this carbon, and remembering between, between any two atoms, there is only one sigma covalent bond. We have one bond here, one sigma bond here, and one sigma covalent bond here. So that's your three sigma covalent bonds. The fourth covalent bond must be a pi covalent bond. We'll be spending more time talking about pi bonds a little bit later this semester, but in a pi covalent bond, the electrons are above and below the plane. They are not directly in between as they are for sigma covalent bonds. Now for carbon, whenever we have sp2 hybridization, you're always going to have a trigonal planar molecular geometry at that carbon. So this carbon is trigonal planar, represented by the carbon, this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and the other carbon, and then the same for this carbon here. And finally, third type of hybridization associated with carbon is sp hybridization, represented by two sigma covalent bonds. So this carbon is bonded to this hydrogen and to this carbon over here. That's two sigma bonds. In order to get four bonds to carbon, the remaining two bonds are pi covalent bonds, represented by the triple bond between the two carbon atoms. Whenever we have sp hybridization, we always have a linear molecular geometry. All right, so let's apply this now to looking at this molecule. And what we're going to ask first is, what is the hybridization at each carbon atom. So if you wish, pause the recording and see if you can figure this out. Okay, so for this, this carbon here, we've got one, two, three sigma covalent bonds and one pi bond. That is sp2 hybridization. For this carbon, we have one, two, three, four sigma covalent bonds. That is sp3. And for each of these carbons, we have one, two sigma covalent bonds. That's sp hybridization and sp hybridization. 
Now, what is the geometry associated with each of these? SP2, trigonal planar, SP3, tetrahedral, SP linear. The total number of covalent bonds in this molecule. Now again, you can pause this recording in order to try to figure this out for yourself. But if we look at the total number of covalent bonds, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Do this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are 11 total covalent bonds. That's a sum of sigma covalent bonds and pi covalent bonds. Next question, how many sigma covalent bonds are there? All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight total sigma covalent bonds. Remember, we had a total of 11 covalent bonds, so there must be three pi covalent bonds. We have a pi covalent bond here, one pi covalent bond here, and two pi covalent bonds here. 8 plus 3, that's your 11. Now for oxygen and also for nitrogen, it gets a little bit trickier. So let's do this very quickly. We have the structure of methanol below, and what we're interested in is the hybridization and geometry at the oxygen atom. So first off, the oxygen and methanol, and you can, again, pause the recording and fill this little chart out yourself first. The oxygen and methanol has how many sigma covalent bonds? Well, it's got one here and one here. So that's two. The oxygen also has one, two lone pair. So that puts a total of four pairs of electrons around the oxygen. Now we, all, we know that oxygen typically has a bent molecular geometry. But when we look at the electronics of the oxygen, in order for the pair of electrons here and here, here and here to be as far apart from each other as possible, we get the shape of a tetrahedron. So the, so the electronic geometry is tetrahedral. The electronic geometry is looking at the four pairs of electrons around oxygen. We are always interested in molecular geometry. Molecular geometry is represented by the sigma bonds. The sigma bonds give us the bent molecular geometry. But since we have four pairs of electrons around here, the hybridization is sp3. Another example, we have acetone, common solvent. The number of sigma covalent bonds for the oxygen. Well, there's only one. Two lone pairs again. In this case, the molecular geometry is just as, it, just as we see it. It's linear. The hybridization, if we look at the lone pairs on the oxygen, we have the oxygen bonded to this carbon. We have a lone pair and a lone pair. Those are going to be as far apart as possible. That looks like an sp3. Excuse me, that is an sp2. All right, so the oxygen here has sp2 hybridization. Okay, and that is the end of this PowerPoint lecture.